Hey Taurus, welcome back to Star of the Universe Tarot. We are doing your mid-October check-in. Um, I already have this spread out and we have a lot going on for uh, this October spread. Um, I do kind of, um, I did want to talk about it. This is why everything is already out here without, um, without you guys actually watching the whole, um, the whole thing unfold like I, I usually like to do. So, um, I kind of wanted to talk about this spread a little bit because I did, um, I want to say just highlighting, you know, not just me as a tarot reader, but I want to say a bunch of tarot readers were kind of, um, I want to say having, um, this idea of trying to uh, incorporate kind of like the, you know, the holiday spirit, the Halloween spirit into our spreads and stuff while still being relevant, right? So I have this spread here going on, which I want to start off by saying we're still doing the Mystical Magnet Tarot for the rest of October, just like promised. Um, I split out the major arcana and what we did is we had this nice little u-shaped spread going on here that is actually Originated from the Alice the Wonderland Oracle. It is called uh, Down the rabbit hole and I got a real kick out of it because I'm a conspiracy theorist geek and I love that shit that being said I had um, I loved the idea of Really incorporating both of the things I really love into one <laughs> So that being said, we have our down the rabbit hole spread, and we're going to, um, let me go ahead and start explaining what we're doing here, okay? So our first card over here is going to be the white rabbit. What this is going to represent is the opportunity that you need to follow, or what it is exactly that is inspiring you. Right here we have the fall. What you will discover about yourself during the descent this third card we have right here is going to be the release, what you need to let go of. Then we have the wisdom over here, the lesson learned up into this point. The challenge, which is going to be the climb out of the rabbit hole, how to apply um, the knowledge that we have now to the real world. The ascent, which is the benefit that we have manifested into the 3D, how our current um, lessons learned is now helping us push through and then of course we have our awakening um, after this journey of course you will have changed and this is now what you, the the new you that you have to offer because of this journey okay so right here in the middle is going to highlight our main challenge that we have to um, overcome okay uh, as far as mid-October goes, probably moving into the first week of, of November. Um, we do have two moons that we're going to hit in that time period. We have the new moon um, tomorrow, the 16th, and um, I'm recording this on the 15th. I don't know if it's going to be, uh, I doubt it's going to be posted by today. It'll be probably be posted by tomorrow, but um, that's tomorrow, and then we have the full moon, the hunter's full moon at the end of the, on the 31st, and then we have here, um, unifying energy of the lunar vibes that you, all of these are um, advice on direct action that would be beneficial during this time period, okay? Um, and then over here we have the Oracle of the Mermaid, also one of Lucy Candavish's, um, one of her decks. With they're going to be representing over here is we're going to get into any outside secret influences that may be directly affecting you. Okay, Taurus? Uh, let's not forget that it's a general reading, so if it does not resonate with you, go ahead and feel free to check any and all your places, the placements, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Um, new moon videos are already posted if you want a more direct, like, love um, reading. That's where... That's where those are. That's the full moon and the new moon readings, okay? These are more general. If uh, love comes out, cool. I'll talk about it. If not, same, right? Okay. That being said, let's go ahead and jump in here. Oh, don't forget that rose could be vice versa too. So if it doesn't sound like something that you're going through, it could be something that your person is currently going through, okay? All right. Now we have beginning... The reading we have law is not justice, rules that are not fair. This is uh, 
Libra energy here, um, having like justice um, in tarot. What's going on here is basically either you, Taurus, or your person is going through a hard time, not, not necessarily with authority so much as realizing um, how cruel the world is, you know, how not everything that is true to law or that is true to justice is truly fair or really getting to um getting to know hand in hand uh karmic justice as well as in divine you know divinely guided justice which also as human beings we are not used to because we believe that what we're taught through our justice system is justice and that's not true okay that being said, let's go ahead and jump into our reading. The white rabbit for you is the will of fortune. This is Leo energy. This is definitely luck turning in your direction. We have the fall. What will you discover about yourself? We have temperance, Sagittarian energy. This is learning to not only believe in divine timing, not only believing that in time everything would heal but also um being confident in it standing in your power and really simultaneously doing all these things knowing that the that the will is going going to turn in your direction knowing that while you're waiting you're healing and while you're healing you're doing something to you know to distract you or not necessarily distract you as much as something productive while you wait what you need to release, we have the devil energy, Capricorn. Um, anything toxic, anything that d no longer serves you, gotta go. It, if it's not, if it's not good for you, it doesn't need to be around you. That goes for people, places, and things. All right, we have the madness. We have the moon. This is being unclear. Be walking through smoky roads, being in the, you know, shadows in the corner of your eye, like, really, sorry, give me a second. This has to do with these, with this, these two together. You're hiding the fact that you have toxic habits. I feel like you guys, I'm a Taurus son. I feel righteous on most days too. That's just earth signs in general. We don't like, um, we don't like showing our flaws because our flaws, we feel, um, just, you're just trying to hide what you think that n people don't like. And that's deception within itself. You should just be proud of everything that you are, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. Okay, and the wisdom we have here, which is the lesson learned up into this point, is to really stand in your power. It's okay, it's okay to have a healthy ego as long as you don't live in that mentality or that type of empathy emperor conquering mentality it's okay to be a ruler and a well-loved ruler you know we have the the challenge which is the climb out of the rabbit hole we have death scorpionic energy there's something that needs to transform either you or something around you a situation in your life that is holding you back from from, or it could be just holding the will back from completely turning in your favor. We have the Ascent. This is the Chariot, Cancerian Energy. This talks about um, fast, move it, fast movement forward in victory. It could be that the moment that you let go of this last little toxic residue, which is, could, it could be just be um, you not believing in yourself, 
you know, just bringing in a, maybe a little bit more confidence, maybe just embracing your darker, your, your darker aspects. Um, but once you come into this, into this emperor power, because emperor is, um, Aries, but it's also Taurian energy. So emperor as empress, you know, we don't regender, we read energy, whatever it is that's going to take for you to release this toxicity, find clarity that this is how you can bring yourself into power by really just embracing all of you and not being ashamed of it, you'll be able to make this full transformation and literally charge forward in victory. The awakening we have, the star. Aquarian energy, you could, you could, um, it's going to lead to the ultimate healing. Not only is it going to lead to the ultimate healing, like deep cellular healing, healing from the inside out, um, this is also considered a performer card. So if you are working on any project that is, you know, you feel you're trying to boost forward um, in music, in um, a YouTube channel like this one, um, and um, poetry, writing, anything, like anything that you feel that um, is really pulling you towards that type of, you know, um, maybe you do a podcast. You know, anything that's really drawing you to that world stage type or uh, really um, being recognized within your community, you're really um, starting to stand out now. Especially the moment this transformation takes over when this, when the last of this residue toxicity just disappears, dissipates. Okay, we have divine sensuality. Making love and erotica. The unseen. Too much is hidden from you. Visions. Psychic images. Clairvoyance. Seeing and out of body travel. And freedom, independence, and self-determination. I feel like this toxic energy has really kept you from expressing yourself fully. Like, I want to say impossibly every aspect of your life. You always felt like you were unseen in some way, some shape or form. Either whether you did this on purpose in order to kind of, um, kind of dim your light or withhold what it is that made you... Um, special because you felt like it, it it left you vulnerable so the more vulnerable you felt the more you felt you had to shell yourself and shield yourself and you until you started realizing that you're the one who has these visions or these darkened visions of yourself this is not something that people view you as every on an everyday basis this is something that you this is an illusion that you have created for yourself and spirit's telling you to release yourself from it find the freedom free yourself because this is what's keeping you from this all right let's clarify Why is the Wheel of Fortune here for Taurus? Why is the Wheel of Fortune here for Taurus? Okay. We have the Three of Wands, Leo, Sag, Aries, and the Ace of Cups, Cancer, uh, Pisces, Scorpio. You've been waiting for your ships to come in for quite some time now. You know that slowly but surely that will has been turning in your favor. And as you wait, you learned 
to have not only a, be a new beginning in love, but a new beginning, I think, with yourself, within yourself. Just really taking the time to understand your vulnerabilities, taking the time to see what is it that you keep hidden that you don't want people to see. Because I want to say as Taurus, we're, we're naturally, you know, spiritual. I mean, Major Arcana number five, that's the Hierophant, right? That's um, the teacher and the student, the whole, the whole nine yards as far as spirituality goes. You know what you're doing. But that being said, you know what you're doing to hold you back as well. Like working on certain aspects and ignoring others. Tell me about the devil, please. You have to release something that you thought that you put in a lot of work on. A lot of time, money, effort, uh, sweat, blood, and tears, the whole nine yards. There's something that was heavily invested in. Um, it could have been... It could have been... It could have been a relationship. It could have been... Um, a business it could have been a family home it could have been a setting just um an event something that you felt that took a lot of you and you invested into it happily the problem is that with it upside down this is something that a you either had to abandon ship on or b it just it it perished tell me about the moon we have the hermit. See, and it came out upside down. This is Virgo energy, by the way. You don't want... Even if you yourself go in and look into your, your let's say, your wounding, your childhood wounding, your conditioning, everything that is that, you know, like I'm saying, this, these toxic energies that people don't want to look at on a day-to-day -day basis or even on a week-to-week -week basis, even if you had, like, hey, we're going to do shadow work this one day. Like, no, it's just not. Some people just avoid it at all costs. You didn't avoid it. No, you did it. What happened is that you're not expressing all of every, all the toxicities that you've healed already. It's almost like not taking credit where credit is due. Tell me about the emperor. Yeah, see, justice upside down. Oh, no. Sorry. No, regular. Sorry. Ups. Up. <laughs> you need to create your own justice. Because people don't know what you did in your shadow work. Only you can speak for yourself. You know what you did when you went into your soul and you cleared out those toxins. You're the one who's going to provide yourself justice in order by expressing this expressing that that you went through this process that you understand that this is no longer uh what suits you and i think people just need to give you credit for it i think people need to just understand that you're just not that you're not that person anymore i think is what you're i think is what you're having trouble with here Justice is Librian energy, by the way. Talk to me about death. The King of Cups. Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer. Um, there is a lot of love here that's being unexpressed. That could be you. That could be the person that you're connecting with. Or it could just be both of you because you cannot... Uh, hold on. Tell me more about the King of Cups, please. Tell me a little bit more about this King of Cups. Okay. The lovers. There, There's a choice. Or there was a choice. Maybe you're stuck in the past that there was a choice and there's no longer a choice. But it's keeping you from, from expressing your love fully. Regardless of if, if this is an actual choice or it's just an illusion of a choice. You get me? Like, that's up to you whether you want to release that or not. Tell me about the chariot. Yeah, see? The only thing that's keeping you back is you. 
you're holding yourself back with all these, um, with this mental fucking roundabout, this merry-go-round of what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if. No, 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 no. I've made this mistake before, but it's, I think what you're failing to realize here is that maybe the mistakes that you made before were made or had a certain reaction because of the person that reacted to the choices you made. And that's what I mean by you're not taking the time to really assess everything. I feel like you're just going in to tell yourself, oh yeah, this was your fault, this was your fault, this was your fault. Instead of going in like, oh wait, I could have handled that differently. This person could have handled that differently. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, they shouldn't have said this. You know, and just really analyzing that the whole conversation instead of like, oh, that's where I blew up. That's where I fucked up. Damn, I, I'm a terrible fucking person. Tell me about the star, please. The tower. Scorpionic energy. You know that you're almost healed. Hell, it's very possible that you know that you're already in your glow stage. But the only person that can't accept this is you. And the moment that you accept this, that is going to be your biggest tower moment. Please um, give me more details about these outside influences, please. Outside influences here. Okay. Okay. We have the Eight of Pentacles here. And the world. Leo energy. Stop working on yourself and stand up. And stand and really start defending yourself. Let people know that there were plenty of toxic cycles that had you bound. But that you know that you can do better. And that you are doing better. Because if you weren't doing better, well, what the fuck? Wouldn't you still be stuck in these cycles? Don't let nobody... Only you know how you feel about you on an everyday basis, Taurus. And it's up to you which... To find this freedom away from from what people think or how they view you. And I get it. Like, we kind of do like the attention a little bit, whatever. Like, I get it. Like, earth signs. But it's not even that. Like, we are too... Let me see. Clarify this a little bit more. Just one more, please. Yeah. You know that you've healed, you know that, you know, you know. It's time for you to tell the world. It's time for you to tell the world. I have that song in my head, like, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Got to let it show. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, you know. we do. Yeah, my son over there singing his thing, too. He knows what I'm talking about, too. Let's get into these. <laughs> Let's get into these moon messages we have a fiery climax approaches the full moon in aries oh my God. you are good enough the full moon in virgo leave it to a feather earth sign to tell you how you feel right taurus <laughs> and you are very close to achieving your goal don't stop now don't be discouraged. Don't let the past hold you back. You are good enough. There's a fiery max, a fiery climax approaching because you are very, very close to achieving your goal. All right. Let's see. Let's get a oracle of the visions out here. Beautiful. Thank you. That was rather quick. All right. We got 51. Five plus one is six. Six has to do with... The planet Venus has to talk about love stable, and stable foundations. Okay. And we have messages, 
deadlines and anticipation. Waiting, waiting, waiting. All my life I've been waiting for my life to begin as if somehow my life was ahead of me and that someday I would arrive at it. Waiting for a message to arrive can bring anxiety, fear, hope, good news or bad news, acceptance or rejection. A ticking clock counts down the time remaining. A young woman has been waiting anxiously and the sleeping dog suggests she has done so for some time. The phone is silent and the bouquet of roses suggests a previous response was received, but from whom? The same sender or someone else? Either way, the anticipated answer finally arrives. But by now the clock indicates that the hour is past, just in time or too late. The process of waiting for a response isn't merely one of passing the time patiently. The immediacy or tardiness of the response may also provide some insight beyond the message itself. A deadline imposed may be tied to a condition or ultimatum. There is flexibility or has the opportunity be been lost? If it took too long, you can't wait forever. You can't wait for life to begin. You need to step up out of your comfort zone and really make it happen for yourself because there's nothing, there's nothing that anybody can do for you that you can't do for yourself. And you need to do for you first before you can do for anyone else. Any final messages for Taurus Universe? Okay. We have, my happiness is a direct reflection of my level of faith in the universe. I'm unapologetic about what I desire and trust that what I focus on will grow. And when I focus on my inner light, I see the world through the lens of love. All right, Taurus, I hoped, I hope, <laughs> hoped it, huh? I hope this helped, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye.